Howdy and welcome back to another Bevy video. Today we get to celebrate the release of Bevy 0.10, which comes with a complete overhaul to how we do system scheduling, as well as some great graphics and performance improvements. In case you missed it, I took a vacation for the last few weeks, but now I'm back and I'm ready to dive into making more Bevy content. I have a couple of ideas for projects, and I want to start discussing game design at a higher level than I have been, so expect more videos focusing on ECS design and less line-by-line -line explanations going forward. If you're new here or only passively follow Bevy, then I welcome you, and I hope this is the version that makes you actually give it a chance. Bevy is a completely Rust-based open-source game engine, with a focus on having the most ergonomic and performant ECS-based design. There are many great examples on their GitHub repo which should help get you started, as well as the other videos on my channel. So without further ado, let's start actually looking at the new features of Bevy 0.10. If you've been around Bevy for any period of time, then you've probably heard about the stageless RFC, and you've maybe even tried out the IES loopless crate. Now all of that seems to be merged and released with this version of Bevy. Basically, there were some fundamental problems with the old scheduling design that made more complicated uses start to break down. Specifically, things like run criteria and fixed time steps really struggled. To solve this, Bevy has done away with the old stages like pre and post update, and now has a more dynamic ordering system. We can see this by looking at the nice visualization they've created of the default Bevy system ordering. Here, we can see all of the old pre-update, update, and post-update stages, but they are no longer hard boundaries and are much more flexible. We'll come back to looking at this visualization in a minute, but first let's get started looking at how we can use these systems ourselves. To get started, we can now add systems as a tuple using the add system function on the app builder. This works with the old before and after modifiers as well. But we do have one new modifier, which can order the entire tuple called chain. This will ensure that these systems run each frame in the order they appear in the tuple. I expect to see more higher level functions like this that work on groups of systems as Bevy develops. Just be careful of all the parentheses and make sure you're calling add systems with an S here. So that's very nice, and honestly, it's probably enough for the absolute beginner applications, but let's look at how we can impose even more high level structure to our schedule. The concept of system sets has been reworked to be a much more flexible design now. We can now create an enum, which derives system set and create our own categorization of systems to group and order as a set. This is even how the pre-update, update, and post-update sets are implemented in the engine. Now we can call the inset modifier on our systems when we add them to the app. This will tag which set they are a part of. This even works with the new tuples of systems and plays nice with the chain function we just looked at. Next, we can set orderings between sets using the configure set function on our app builder. This is great because it will hopefully make it easier to order your systems relative to the community plugins you might be using, which was always a bit of a pain in older Bevy versions. Systems can be in any number of sets and will follow all of the rules of the sets they are in. And if you create any constraints Bevy can't resolve, it should crash with an easy to read error message. Finally, there's also the concept of base sets, which lets you set systems up in the old familiar stages. This also lets you access the startup stages for things like asset loading. And of course, you can make your own base sets, and the default one is update, just like before. Now you might be wondering about when commands are applied. In old Bevy, the main reason I would use different stages was to force command flushes so entities that I spawned could be modified in the same frame that they were created. Now we have a magic system which we can add many times to the app called Apply System Buffers. This system is an exclusive system, so it can apply our commands, but it can't be run in parallel with any other systems, so to be careful using it. Currently, I'm imagining using it as creating a sync point in the schedule just like the old stages used to be. Actually, in the Bevy default graph we saw before, we can see it being called in between each one of the old stages. Thanks to all of these changes, run conditions are now much more usable in Bevy 0.10. Basically, there's another modifier for systems to control when they should run, called run if. Here you can pass any system that returns a bool. These conditions can query the world and are pretty similar to systems. Bevy even has a new collection of built-in conditions that you can use and look at the source code of to learn how to create your own. These are very flexible and can even be chained together with some common functional operations. Another big change is the states, which are a personal favorite feature of Bevy for me. First off, they got rid of the state stack. I always knew it existed and mentioned it for videos, but I never heard of anyone using it, 
and I couldn't find a great use for it myself either. It seems that the Bevy team has had the same experience and has finally cut that functionality. It's nice to see the team giving up on something that the community isn't using, even after investing development time into it. I think that shows a very healthy mind state toward the project. States still need to be added to the app, but now seem to create their own system sets. This behaves just like any other system set that we looked at a few minutes ago, and gives us a nice way to run a set of systems in update only when the game is in a current state. We also have our on-enter and on-exit variants of this as well, but these appear to be separate schedules. I haven't really went into schedules as those are a bit more of an advanced feature, but the idea should be straightforward. These functions aren't run every frame and are just a collection of systems to run during the state transition. It seems the main thing to worry about is calling in schedule instead of in set to use on enter and on exit. Let me know in the comments if you want more discussion about schedules, because it seems like they allow for some very exotic tricks and orderings of systems. Also, now there is a next state resource, which is what you'll use for queuing a state change. This should be better than the old approach, which returned a weird result that I never worried about if a change was already queued. With all of that, I think I've summarized the new scheduling system as best I can. I still need to spend many hours toying with it myself before I form strong opinions about the best way to use all the new features. But overall, I think it looks really clean and exciting to play with. Check this video for pinned comments in case I made any major errors in summarizing the release blog post. The rest of Bevy 0.10 is mostly graphic updates and many small features, so let's quickly look at some of them. First we have Cascaded Shadow Maps, which should fix a problem I saw in my Voxel project, where shadows just always rendered at the wrong resolution. Now we have a more modern approach where the detail of the shadows is dependent on the distance to the camera. Very nice and I'm excited to push this to the limits. We also have environmental lighting, better bloom, fog, tone mapping, as well as some new shader passes and shader language functionality, which will hopefully make it easier to make your own graphics effects. This should also allow for the engine developers to add in more things like ambient occlusion to Bevy by default. A lot of these graphics updates are outside of my expertise, but the general picture I get is the graphics is always going to be getting better, and the wizards behind Bevy's graphics are building an amazing foundation to make a modern rendering system on top of. Another thing people might find interesting is the Pixel Perfect example, which claims to finally show how to properly do sprite art in Bevy. I'm excited to toy with this one myself because I tend toward pixel art 2D games in my own development. There's also been some changes to change detection, and we now have rough queries. I need to look into this more on my own, but the idea seems to be better change detection. As our last thing, let's celebrate the massive performance gains this version of Bevy brings. Skimming some of the optimizations seems to indicate that many common actions in Bevy now perform twice as well, and it's always great to know that Bevy will always be getting faster and better with each new version. High performance is one of my favorite features of Bevy, and seeing how much effort people are putting into optimizing everything is great. Also, now the rendering schedule runs in parallel to the main game app, which should be a mind-blowing improvement for many games, and I might profile all of my projects after I get them updated. Overall, I love this update, and it was well worth the wait. I'm excited to jump into the new scheduling world, and having everything constantly improving is such an exciting thing to see in a game engine. I'm hoping to get back into the video production grind going forward, so I hope you're ready to follow along to see where Bevy takes us. As always, thank you so much to my wonderful Patreons who make videos like this possible, and thank you for watching.